Views and opinions expressed within the following program are solely those of the individual. These views and opinions do not necessarily represent those of Shaw TV. Hey Calgary, I'm Kevin Chorney. It's May 16th, 2013, and this is Calgary Now. Within Calgary's buzzing music scene are a few gems. They're small, growing, and amazing, but not noticeable unless you're looking for it and paying attention. One of these gems is Calgary's hip-hop scene. It's a unique collection of artists of all mediums, music, visual art, and dance, and includes promoters, fans, and venues striving to create work in the community, support the talent that is here, and celebrate those from across the country and around the globe. In true Calgary spirit, it's being done because of the Calgarians who love it and want it to be here and being done from the ground up. From weekly showcases of local music, dance, and art, to bringing in legends of hip-hop for sold-out shows, Calgary's hip-hop scene exists and is putting down lasting roots. It sure took its time, but Calgary's hip-hop scene seems to be alive and well nowadays. But that's not to say Calgary is simply producing quality hip-hop music, which our city definitely is. Rather, hip-hop culture as a whole has blossomed in our city steadily over the past decade. Calgary has produced award-winning breakdancers as well as established and legitimized graffiti artists whose artwork is commanding top dollar at art shows. And yes, some very thoughtful and talented MCs and DJs, many of whom are doing a solid job of capturing the spirit and pulse of our city in their music. So is this the natural progression of a growing urban center, or is our city unique in its nurturing spirit toward hip-hop culture? My guests and I are sitting down to discuss in just a few minutes here. Feel free to join the conversation by calling 403-539-6710 or drop us a tweet at Calgary Now Show. Stay with us. I think the hip hop culture has grown actually a lot in the last little while. Um, I think for Calgary we've kind of had this idea or notion that we're total country city and it's all country music and that kind of thing so not that country music isn't awesome but it's great to kind of see this shift um, really just towards recognizing what's already here. Um, I think that a large part of the success of kind of emerging hip-hop uh, whether it's local artists or more shows coming to the city um, has a lot to do with the promoters directly that's the biggest thing that I've noticed is when you're dealing with hip-hop it seems that the actual promoters of the show or the festival or whatever it is that's going on here in Calgary pump the crap out of it in terms of promotions which is great because through social media you know Facebook Twitter that's how I'm finding out about what's going on in Calgary in terms of hip-hop culture versus you know seeing ads on TV or reading about it in newspapers and magazines and stuff so um, I think it's growing and it's largely in part of just promotions and social media so I think it's awesome. Joining me is Adam Hicks from Dragonfly Empire, Benny Johnson the man behind the 10 at 10 hip-hop showcase and Rebecca Dawn, a hip-hop MC. Guys, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for having us. I want to hear all about you briefly, Benny. Tell me about yourself. I'm just a regular guy, an MC, promoter. I run my own business. It's a graphic and web design company. So in between, I try to stay in the arts and stay in, stay in the business world. Hip-hop aficionado, it sounds like. Entrepreneur, connoisseur of sorts, perfect, I guess. Perfect fit. Yes. Thanks again for being here. Yeah. Rebecca, my pleasure. an uh, MC. Yes, I'm a hip-hop MC. I work with a crew called Controverse Collective, and I'm also on the roster for Girls on Decks, which is Calgary's longest-running all-girl DJ collective, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Freestyle Olympics. Busy person. And then the busiest man of them all. <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in Calgary, uh, which, you know, definitely feel like a minority sometimes these days telling people yeah, you're a native Calgarian. Sure. So I really had a chance to kind of experience Calgary when there was no hip-hop culture. Fell in love with hip-hop in the early 90s. I love movies like Juice and Boys in the Hood. It really brought me into that culture and that, that kind of art. Uh, and yeah, followed the music avidly. Uh, had a radio show on CJSW promoting hip-hop music uh, for the better part of 15 years now. Wow. And uh, me and my man TK uh, founded uh, Dragon Fly Empire, and we've been doing that for a decade now plus. So. I'm a big, big fan of Dragonfly Empire. I Thank think uh, a lot of people already guys are definitely yeah. making waves, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get right to it, guys. Why is it that the hip-hop scene in Calgary seems to have seemingly blown right up? It seems like it's a pretty big scene now. What is unique about our city you think that's allowed that? I think it's a combination of things. I think it's just uh, the actual people who want to see this stuff kind of coming to a bigger halt. I think, like you said before, just being born in Calgary, you've seen it kind of blossom. That's because there's a lot of people from out of town, myself included, who are just like, yo, we're in Calgary now. Where's the culture? Where's the hip-hop scene? Where's some live music that can kind of 
be a part of. And I think a combination of that and a lot of people who were kind of behind the scenes trying to bring that stuff in has really gave an avenue for people to be like, yo, there's there's a scene here. Let's get involved. Let's be an artist. Let's be an MC. Let's attend an event. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Is it that big? Is it or am I am I off the mark? Hip hop is big in Calgary, is it not? Oh, that's it's very big, yeah. It's, I think so. It's big, but I think there's a long way to go, especially when you look at our actual population. It's 1.1 million. I think there could be a lot more support for, for events and stuff, but sure. I think it's growing for sure on that kind of level. Yeah. You guys know better than me. Uh, absolutely. Um, I would say uh, in terms of, like, Calgary bred hip hop. There's more artists uh, and, and entertainers uh, now than ever. Um, it's definitely uh, blossomed. You know, there's always been other, you know, guests, uh, you know, coming from out of town, uh, you know, superstars and stuff. But right, right. Uh, we've we've really had a chance. You know, it's really adaptive. Uh, you know, social media. There's a chance for people to build. There's a chance for people to promote themselves without having a big machine behind you. Uh, so really, what I'm witnessing is a big DIY spirit and uh, a lot of people just, you know, taking it. Mm -hmm. You By agree, the it, Rebecca? It's I do, and I think, I mean, it seems huge to me because hip-hop is my life 24-7, so to me it seems that the scene is just massive because it takes up such a massive part of my life. But I think the really cool thing about the scene is that it's kind of got so many different sub-genres that are really active. Like, for example, there's a battle scene where battle rappers will duke it out, and that's really male-dominated, aggressive type of thing. But then right. there's these festivals that will bring in the whole electronic music, and they've got Tai Chi workshops and vegan cooking, and there's MCs rapping there too. And so that's another incarnation of hip-hop. And then personally, like, the place that I think the heart and soul of hip hop for me is all the reaching out to the youth that's been going on because there's programs through Calgary Young Offenders Center and Boys and Girls Club and Global Fest where actually different types of artists from all the elements like graffiti, mm -hmm. dancers, MCs will go to places where there's high risk youth who are looking for a kind of role models and something to give them direction and yeah. guidance and they'll yeah. teach them hip hop art. And so to me that's like, I love being involved in that. To me that's immediately that's giving back to the community. That's what you know, hip hop is. I think it's unfortunate, though. I mean, a lot of people have the misconception that, you know, hip-hop culture, the first thing they associate it with is, you know, rap music. You know, mm -hmm. when I say rap music, I guess I mean maybe some early 90s gangsters type music. And it's a stigma, I think. that That's right. It's a stereotype. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, rap or hip-hop, and they just immediately get this preconceived notion. But it's so much more than that. So what's the big difference, then? What's the difference between rap and hip-hop? Or is it? It's it's it's, it, it's just part of you know the overall hip hop picture. Uh, you know, people are going to argue till they're blue in the face over what's real hip hop music mm -hmm. versus what's rap music. You don't really want to break it up that much. But with I guess what you're talking about, rap music, um, that sort of realm, they probably don't pay as much attention to the other elements and to the culture as a whole. So then you get these people, yo, I'm a rapper, but really you don't see them sort of embracing the entire culture. Right, right. And there's there's a lot of different facets to the culture. Uh, break dancing. For example, of course, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Graffiti writing is another big one. Yeah, I notice so amongst uh, if you're you know, know b-boy crew or if you're a graffiti writer, even an MC or DJ, usually you've got uh, like a moniker. You know, mm -hmm. you've got your your alter ego. Mm -hmm. Is oh, it yeah. about an alter ego? I think the alter ego adds to you know what you want to present. It, it, it kind of gives you a different kind of stage name, a, a different kind of presence that says, "Hey, I'm involved with this culture, and this is my moniker when I'm there." Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's. I think even the kind of trend these days is people actually just taking their own names, shortening their last name, and just being like, "This is me. I am hip hop. I represent hip hop to the core by my government name, and I'm just here representing." So I, I think the moniker used to be part of like you know a kind of a veil to hide behind, but yeah. now it's becoming more so like I am hip hop type thing. Mm. Agreed? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So is it, is, is it safe to say that maybe hip hop has really transcended different socioeconomic statuses, oh, much gosh. like rock and roll Every in the 1960s, status. for example? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Not just all the categories, like your age, your gender, your sexual orientation, your ethnic background, like whether it's your first or second language you're rapping yeah. in. It's just hip hop. If you love hip hop and you're part of that culture, then you are hip hop. And that's what I think is so important because hip hop gives us a tool to see each other as individual creative entities, not just these categories that society might want to put us in. I think hip hop is actually progress much better than rock and roll did. Rock and roll started as a black art form and then that that whole part of the identity was pretty much robbed. And with hip hop you've seen it naturally progress into something that embraces different cultures, yeah. different backgrounds, everything, different you know, very inclusive. Yeah. Exactly. So what makes it unique? I mean, why is that? Well, I think hip hop was the first kind of like real growing sampling genre where it really took from a whole bunch of different genres to make that genre grow. So every single day when people are just like, oh that's not real hip hop, it's like 
the basis of hip hop is to sample, is to grow, That's is right. to become something completely now, okay, different. This is, is, it, is it real hip hop, or are we just expanding your limited view of what hip hop is? That's exactly is. what it is. Okay, by yeah. sampling, as a DJ, by sampling, you're, you're somewhat paying homage, are you not? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I mean. Uh, as someone who samples, I wouldn't be taking the work of another artist unless I love their music and tremendously respected them, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, pretty That's simple. That's true. And even in our lyrics, too, like I sample, like I'll reference different MCs that I respect, and then a little later on in my lyric, I'll drop their name and let you know who I'm talking about, right? It's yeah, kinda, for sure. It's yeah. one of those things, too. Like, if you're paying attention to hip-hop and you, there's something that's really trendy at the time and you kind of mention it, it's kind of like the who's who. If you're paying attention, you'll, you'll pick up on that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of always about sampling it's and about, taking. It's about helping each other. It sounds like there's a real spirit of community. Yeah, absolutely. Building sure. on the foundation. Yeah, for sure. No, it's, I mean, I know you've... I imagine a few of you, I know you've traveled, definitely. Uh, is it the same spirit in other cities where artists want to collaborate and create something unique to our city? Or is that uh, kind of broad amongst the whole culture around the globe? From what I've noticed, I've only done kind of like, you know, the North Americas and stuff. It's, it seems like the bigger cities, a lot of them do have their identity. And it's usually shaped by one artist, though. Mm -hmm. Like one artist who may have blown up or something in that kind of aspect. Like yeah. right now, you're looking at Drake coming out of Toronto, and he's really kind of representing Canadian hip-hop. But before him, there was Chaos. There's guys like Kanon, who you will frequently hear about at the festivals Love and that kind of stuff. Chaos, yeah. Fantastic music, right? Yeah. But I think Drake finally took it over to that, like, mainstream element where he's... Actually, if you look at the records, he's the number one hip-hop selling single artist of all time of so all time. past jay-z he... past past kanye wow. past everyone he's had the most singles hip-hop singles and he's from toronto so i think when you look at toronto you're kind of just like you think of drake's kind of circle um that kind of represents that but it's still you know what else can you do to kind of represent your city i don't mm -hmm. think too many other people are doing things that are no you, you definitely make a really good point though mm -hmm. and like with with toronto before it was drake it was cardinal before yeah. that it was socrates mm -hmm. and whenever you have these breakthrough artists uh they really do help uh sculpt the scene influence their peers mm -hmm. and then that's when you start to get more of a, a uniform identity yeah. calgary we haven't had a breakout artist like that per se who's like huge like killing the pop charts mm -hmm. so therefore you have all these factions that are really trying and pushing what they do and because you don't have that that big fish fish in the water uh people are a little more you know uh willing to just try their own and thing and their own thing. more creativity? More Absolutely. Music, you know? Absolutely. For sure. For sure. You know, I, like, I think that's, that's a double-edged sword because uh, as much as people like Drake and Cardinal really help bring the spotlight on Toronto, uh, you know, Toronto's one of the most diverse cities in the world and yeah. there is so much hip-hop, so much culture from there, so many different styles. Yeah, of course. You know, and the, you know, you really need to look beneath the surface wherever you go. Yeah, for sure. Same could be said with New York, too, when you look at the styles of the old New York style is a certain style of hip-hop, very lyricism yes. organized and stuff, but now yes. today it's really kind of more of the Shifting trap hip-hop beats. Toward and, the beat, though, yeah, yeah, and the southern, southern sound, because I guess the whole world now is more global. It's socio-global, so it's really hard to say that sound is just from there, from New York exactly. or from whatever. It's, it's a lot harder to have a little isolated niches, because your favorite artist could be, you know, you could be checking them out every day all the way on their side of the world. So that's going to sculpt your sound rather than who's in your neighborhood. It's fascinating. It is. It's fascinating. Folks, we're going to take a quick, a quick break here and hear from our Rant Pack. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. I think the hip-hop culture in Calgary is in a constantly evolving state. Everything's growing at a pace. Certain things uh, in culture scenes uh, outpace and outgrow each other at different times. I think that the uh, hip-hop culture in Calgary is growing at a faster rate now than it used to in the past. Um, I think that the venues are starting to realize that this is a viable thing as long as the promoters keep their end of the bargain and the, the acts keep their end of the bargain and then everything can grow. Everything needs to start at a grassroots level. It's not just the music, it's also the dance that comes along with it and the respect culture that comes along with uh, hip hop culture uh, is, is probably on the brink of about to explode in Calgary. Artists like Transit and Dragonfly Empire are ready to break onto the major scene but it all comes down to that balance between selling out and making money doing what you love. You have to find a balance doing that. Otherwise, you're going to be in big trouble and stuck being in the underground forever or being considered a sellout. And I think those two things are pretty prevalent in hip-hop culture and you need to decide as an artist, dancer or singer or rapper, whatever you decide is going to be your future. Hey Calgary, welcome back. Tonight we're talking about Calgary's hip-hop scene. Don't forget, you want to get involved, shoot us a tweet or you can get us on the ringer. Now, 
I saw you, Benny, listening to Adam there. Yeah. Maybe you disagree a little bit with what he was saying? Uh, I think he said something along the lines of, you know, whether you're going to be a performer and Calgary's hip-hop scene's about to blow up and it's a matter of you want to sell out or not. I still think we're kind of far away from having um, that potential to kind of put yourself on a platform to sell out. I think the whole notion of selling out means that you need to change who you are as an artist or change your craft so more people can hear you. But I still think there's still a lot of people who need to understand maybe what hip-hop is as like a whole to get to that stage to get to get to that stage and then to kind of appreciate that then to say oh okay your style hip hop like this was before then to get it on vibe 98.5 or or virgin 98.5 or whatever to hear your stuff yeah i'm a listener to be honest (laughs) um i i gotta i gotta wonder though calgary you know he's kind of been known around canada especially and i guess arguably around the world as Mm -hmm. uh, the stampede city yeah is there motivation amongst the hip-hop community uh, be it whatever the genre of art form we're talking about to maybe change that perception of our city through the art form this in this, this might be mildly off topic but i think the biggest irony around that is that yeah. the calgary stampede was founded by a new york born rancher oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah no I, idea i, I, yeah, I don't know oh, wow. so right there <laughs> but uh absolutely uh I, I mean i mean you gotta love transit you know he 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 took that whole misconception that, that that whole perception head on with uh with, with Friend of the, the show by the way with, with, with the song he did with with jan arden you know really challenged that and i think you're seeing that like if, if even even if you look at what tourism calgary is doing to promote the city the city as a whole well beyond the hip-hop scene is really trying to tackle that image sure. not to say we don't appreciate you know dust off our duds for 10 days in july mm-hmm. but uh most people i talk to you know who live in calgary see it as, as a very cosmopolitan place you know yes. very urban very cultural uh we just happen to have that element which you know it's there. We can embrace. Yeah. You know, we, so, we don't have to hate it. Is it part of your motivation, Rebecca? Part to counteract Stampede? Yeah, maybe shy that stigma away a little bit. Well, I mean, I suppose. I don't really think about it in terms of a reaction. I'm more just progressive. Like, I agree with Adam. I see it as being a cosmopolitan place that's vibrant with its arts culture. Cultural capital and, of Canada. Well, yeah. So I'm just immersed in that. So every day I just see myself building. And, and maybe when I do go outside the city, people kind of reflect that perception back to me. But yeah, I guess with my art, I can teach them that we are so much more than that. We have such a diversity of different types of yeah, artists here. Clearly, clearly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the universality of, of hip hop. I know we touched on it briefly earlier. Uh, your, your motivation, I mean, you got to look at female artists like uh, you know, Roxanne Shante comes to mind. <laughs> sure, yeah. Is, is this somebody Classic. that uh, you gravitated towards uh, at a young of age? Of course, I love Roxanne Shante, Salt and Peppa, Queen mm-hmm. Latifah. Those are huge influences for me, of course. And then um, Lauren Hill, obviously. Sure. And then Tax trouble, though, right now. Right, well, hey. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Principles. And, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's always been like that. That's uh, At its core, I think hip hop has been so accepting. And it's important that people realize, you know, or I'm off the, I'm off the mark. No, yeah. absolutely. I think, you know, earlier on when I was getting into it, there was this real exclusivity. You know, it did come from inner city New York. So there was this whole first faction of supporters and artists who felt that you had to fit that role. Uh, and nowadays what you've seen is the evolution. And you've seen the fact that so many people from different areas, walks of life, socioeconomic backgrounds have discovered this is just a medium of expression that we can yeah. use just as easily. It's, the, it's always been the most accessible art form back in the day whether you had a record player nowadays, whether you have a computer with Fruity Loops on it. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's just very accessible. It's really positive. And uh, I think people That's are right. realizing now that it's, it's universal. Anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. No one's, no one's going to have their own vision, you know, their own perfect vision. No one's ever going to, no two people are ever going to see eye to eye on, on yeah. what hip hop sounds yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the fact is that, uh, you know, all kinds of artists are building real audiences and showing you that it's possible to be a successful artist no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. Benny, how has the internet changed the face of hip hop culture. Oh man, it's a big question. <laughs> I know. It is, it is completely just blown it up. Like when you even when we were talking about earlier about being like in your little nugget of, of the cities or of the country, that kind of stuff, and only having your own kind of crafted sound. Yeah. Now you have guys in the middle of you know Alberta having collaboration records with guys in Japan, and you guys are crossing Crazy. language barriers, crossing yeah. borders yeah. just to make songs. You're going on tour. Actually, now I think the whole music model is you're not really making money based off of your individual singles. It's more or less touring or doing live shows where you're getting paid for that. And it is about people who know about you from other cities who you've never even visited yet. So, so it's been a huge tool. Just a, it's been, Absolutely. I think, the biggest tool when it comes to hip hop. It's because it's crossed so many barriers when you're talking about Africa, China, Europe, yeah. Yeah. France, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. You mentioned double edged sword. Well, what's the, uh, what's the counter side? Jeez, <laughs> where do I start? Yeah. No, uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely a wonderful uh, means of getting yourself out there, of promoting your music. Um, 
you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of counter arguments. It's an anonymous place where yeah. people can get behind a screen name and say anything. Yeah, you know, of course. <laughs> it, it, can be a re it, it can be a real huge den of, of negativity, yeah, yeah. definitely. And I, I would also go as far as to say that it, it almost opens up a little too much. Back in the day, you had filters, levels that people had to get to before they were recognized as credible artists. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you have everybody. Yes. And I'm not trying to you know, point any fingers no. individually, but it is a lot more saturated than it so, used to be. Doesn't that make it tougher as an artist? I mean, if you've got, like, what you've done essentially is filled the pool now. You know, I mean, you've got everybody, I mean, you can get on YouTube in front of a, you know, a camera and a microphone, mm -hmm. and, you know, you can be an afternoon hip hop artist, per se. Mm -hmm. So, like you say, I mean, is that a little frustrating as an artist to make sure you can get your recognition? I mean, people are going to have to cipher and filter through everything else For that's sure. there. People I should think cipher more. Yeah, I think that's kind of the To a degree, thing. though. I mean, yeah. And it just, it's, if anything, it just presents new challenges for artists, you know what I mean? Like, because there is a huge sea of, of activity out there, it's all about finding your angle, your niche, how are you going to float above just a little bit? And that's the new challenge. Whereas it used to be, how can I get this executive to take the time to listen to my demo? Mm -hmm. Now it's like, how can I get all these masses to notice me a little bit more than everyone else? Yeah. Fair enough. That's right. Now you mentioned there is a, a little bit of negativity, though, still. Associate. Oh, I mean, like, like, well, like anything, right? Everywhere you is, go, that's human nature. Yeah. Is Calgary, does, does Calgary have pockets of negativity that maybe are still a bit stronger than in other cities? Or are we no more than other places, yeah, I would say. I would say, a, as a whole, when, when I look out, when I see what these guys are doing and what a lot of other artists are doing, it's a very positive movement and we're all pretty, we all get along pretty well. Mm -hmm, that's true. And I like the fact that the internet's so inclusive because you can just make some music, put it out there, share it with your friends, and I think there's enough space for all of us. Like as an artist, I don't feel threatened or limited when I see new people popping up and posting their, their homemade music that they've created and they want to share. It's like if you want to be included and you want to put yourself out there, then good on you. Good yeah. on you for putting it out there. I support it. Well, it should be noted too, though. I mean, it's not just about music. Right? I mean, you can, like, I've purchased graffiti artwork before mm -hmm. on the internet. Got Absolutely. a piece on the way. It looks, you know, you have that option about graffiti, though. <laughs> this, it's kind of a topic of contention. I'll get each of your opinions. Yeah. Is graffiti, is it, is it artwork? Is it vandalism? Is there a gray area there? It's 100% artwork, 100% artwork. Is sometimes, it 100%? Sometimes the way that it's applied can be looked at as vandalism, but I think yeah. places like Montreal, I think uh, the kid below, he spoke about this, Dave Browning, he spoke about this a lot. Been on the show, actually, the yeah. first season of it, yeah. There you go. And he spoke about how in Montreal they have these, like, kind of sanctioned off areas that mm -hmm. they allow the artists to just, like, paint walls. Mm -hmm. And, like, these, like, uh, the commercial companies are just, like, it's great. Every single month we can change the look of the oh, art yeah. wall. Yeah, yeah, and sure. it's, it's more art. People can actually look and get involved with that. It gives kind of, like, small artists an idea and, and a place to kind of like aspire to get to yeah. and I think it becomes vandalism when somebody isn't talented and they are kind of just like trying to muck up but see, okay, here, here's the catch yeah. 22 how do you become talented if you can't practice your craft you can practice <laughs> your craft but I think there's people who want to do artwork and I think there's people who just want to get a spray can and call yeah, themselves yeah, yeah. an artist and okay. muck up somebody else's mural and I yeah. think that's vandalism I think it's the same thing could be said with a marker in school someone's like oh that's right so. that's right it depends how you use it it's like your art is your tool, so are you going to take that hammer and build a house, or are you going to smack someone in the face with it, right? It's your call. And I just think graffiti is like the blood life of hip-hop. I know I used to live in Mexico City, and that's where I got my start kind of writing raps, and I would be overwhelmed because it's such an urban environment. It's just graffiti, like, would be the one thing I could look forward to mm -hmm. because there's crumbling concrete and garbage and traffic and all these, like, chaotic things that are just sensory overload for an organic human being and sometimes I would feel so crushed and oppressed yeah. in the city <laughs> sure. and I would just be riding the train and I would see this beautiful mural or this piece of graffiti just hidden away and I would just yeah. get a glimpse of it or just walking I would discover this beautiful artwork on this wall and it would inspire me and I would feel like I don't know who made this but I feel connected to them and I feel grateful and I just think graffiti is so important to keep cities inspired. It, it's clearly the most visible of the art forms involved in hip-hop culture. And I love how it's clandestine. It's badass. It's like that's 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 yeah. what I was gonna chime in on too. Yeah. I mean, back back in the days in New York, you had DJs stealing record crates. You had people painting trains, and there was a little bit bit of it that was illegal, and that did kind of add to the charm. I'm not gonna deny it, and yeah. uh, you know <laughs> so. I'm, I'm not here to say, you know, it's totally cool, go paint people's walls, but when, yeah. when the cities and when businesses work with artists, I mean, it's a beautiful form of expression. Uh, probably the biggest thing I saw, we were in Wiesbaden in Germany, which is the home of the Meeting of the Styles, one of the, uh, Europe's biggest graffiti festivals, and there was warehouse districts, blocks on end covered, and it was, it was beautiful, beautiful. Unreal.
Mm -hmm. So how do we curb it in Calgary? I mean, it's still kind of, it's definitely viewed <laughs> as know, negativity. Curb it. Let me tell you something about Calgary. Calgary. Like, what do we need? We need more legal walls? Is that going to help the cause? We need less legal walls. I have a friend who is... Less legal she, Yeah, she got her friends to come in and paint her front fence with graffiti because she's a hip-hop dance instructor. Yeah. And her homies are out there painting her fence, which she's asked them to do. And they got yeah. stopped three times by the police. Yo, what are you doing here? Stop that. That's graffiti. And you can't have any symbols, even on your own property. You're not, like, allowed to put symbols in Calgary. I think that's whack. The city's pretty conservative. Yeah, I too think. conservative. But I think with, with hip-hop... Business owners, I mean, you just, come on, there's a gray area there for sure, guys. For sure, for sure. Yeah. And I think, I think it also graffiti transcends past just graffiti. I think visual art as a whole is part of what hip-hop is. Graffiti art being that kind of representation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. able to do that on the, outside, on the outside platform and stuff. But there's always been sketchers, drawers, people who are able to kind of make these masterpieces in a public setting, like you said, in Mexico City, taking mm. ruin and making it a masterpiece exactly. because of the color. That's what the whole body of setting yeah, the whole true. platform and, of yeah, hip hop and yeah, I've, I've found that basically areas where the municipality and the business community are more accepting of it, you're able to find more of that common ground and that attitude is going to curb the attitude of the artists and get them more on a plane of thought where they're like, okay, well maybe we can work together. Or, or I'd love to paint exactly, this guy's exactly. wall. So definitely I would say that there needs to be a higher level of acceptance and, and I've seen a lot of that in, in Calgary. There have been some really cool uh, festivals yeah. like yeah. Lifestyle and whatnot, mm -hmm. but uh, no, there are still some very conservative attitudes and some barriers that need to be Fair enough, across. folks. Our half hour is nearly up. Oh After this goodness. quick break, we'll wrap it up and ask a random question. Stay with us. Calgary, welcome back. All right, guys, now to end off the discussion, I'm going to ask a random question. Okay, the way this works, honestly, you have to take my word for it. I've got no idea what's on these sheets of paper. Rebecca, you can do the honors. Pick one out, pass it back to me. Okay. I'll ask it, and we can all weigh in. <laughs> Again, I didn't write it. I got no idea. Bear with me. The question is, after the success of Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield on the recent space mission, <laughs> do you wish you were an astronaut? I'd love to be an astronaut. Everyone on the planet would know my name. Are you serious? No, I mean, I think it'd be, I think one of those things is right now being an astronaut, there's only, I think, a handful of people that would ever even get to be up there for the next, like, 50 Definitely years. Definitely a huge privilege. Huge right? privilege yeah. You can just say, yeah, I was on the moon, man. So, you know, like, that's, I think that's a human experience outside of, like, skydiving. Now, not that many people can do, I wouldn't want to do that. That's not my thing. But just you flew around in space. Yeah, sure saying I'm in space. That's what do you think, Rebecca? Well, what? actually, yeah, you know, I went skydiving. So actually, last summer I, d I went skydiving and then I went straight to the Four Plus Urban Arts Expo. So I was on an adrenaline rush, and I think that's as close to being an astronaut as I'm ever going to get because of the self-discipline component, which <laughs> I'm more of a freestyler. Right. Yeah, yeah, cool. That's yeah. Crazy. I don't really think. I oh wanted guys. to be an astronaut from an early age. I would, I would jump in there. I'd like and man. I'd sing some David likewise, Bowie. Likewise, space Folks, uh, Yeah. That's all the time we have. Thanks everybody for joining us. Hopefully, we've shed some light on what we think is an interesting issue. Of course, you can keep the conversation going on Facebook as well as Twitter. And if you have a topic you want us to discuss, don't be a stranger. Drop us a line. Take care. Great job.